One of the uh, cool things about living here in Walter's house is that today, I, I think it started since yesterday, I could hear all these uh, jets flying overhead like we were under attack or something. But evidently there's some kind of air show going on. I don't know if you can see the smoke trails there. I didn't get it on film, sadly. But um, we're just sitting here in the back of Walter's yard. You know, the grass needs to be cut. That's going to happen here soon, over the next couple days. But we're just sitting here um, enjoying the air show from the backyard. Although, I don't see anyone flying here. They, they just did a really cool formation. I think they're making another run. So, hopefully they'll come by soon. But I don't know if you can see that, the trails they left behind. I'm listening to see if I hear one coming. Of course, there's like dragonflies. I don't know if this camera's picking them up. They're putting on their little air show here. Look, the little dragonfly there. It's like little tiny dragonflies putting on their own little show over here. See, there's a dragonfly right there. So they're doing all their own little air show while we're waiting for the the big planes to come by. There, there. There's one over there. You see the trail? Yeah. You know what? That looks like it's right over the Melbourne airport. It is there, of course. They do it every year. From the airport? I didn't know that. I know they do it from the Patrick Air Force Base. But this one's from the Melbourne airport. Yes. coming here somewhere here this is like the perfect viewing spot we're sitting here in um, in shade in Walter's yard it's like a bathroom nearby if you need the bathroom <laughs> you can go get a drink too ice cold water or soda and when you're waiting for the airplanes to come by there's these little dragonflies doing their own little show there there they go right there You know what they look like? That looks like the Air Force Thunderbirds. Yes. If that's the Thunderbirds, you know, um, when I was in the Air Force, I was kind of involved with the Thunderbirds. They actually wanted me as part of their team. My wife's not too impressed. Yeah, it's called AFOG, Air Force Orientation Group. And their hats... You know, the little hats that they wear on their heads, the little blue hats, are different than the regular ones. The regular Air Force hats have like a blue bead along the, the beading. But for the AFOG members, Air Force Orientation Group, it's a very elite group. You get a hat with a gold bead on it. I think there's only like 14 of them in the entire United States Air Force. Because they work with the Thunderbirds and they travel around the, um, the whole world. When, when I was in the um, Air Force at tech school, training to be a um, public affairs specialist, AFOG came by and they tried to recruit me. They thought I would be impressed and I would go with them. <laughs> but you know what happened? Okay, I'm going to tell you a little story while we're waiting for the planes to come by here. I was at Fort Benjamin Harrison studying to become a military photojournalist, a public affairs specialist. Here comes a jet. Uh, I think it's flying on the other side so we can't see it here. But anyhow, I was at Fort Benjamin Harrison in Indiana, Indianapolis, studying to become a public affairs specialist. That's the same school that, um, you know, the character for Robin Williams went to for Good Morning Vietnam. That job that he did was actually very similar to mine. He was a radio broadcast, a broadcast specialist. Um, I was actually trained to be a newspaper editor. Uh huh, right there, the arc. I was trained to be a newspaper editor, or um, I could also do broadcast in an emergency. You know, they didn't have a, um, a broadcast specialist on hand. I don't know what that white thing there traveling really fast. That's another jet. Oh, there's more here going by the house. Wow. Look at them go. Look. 
look, there's another one over there. We are like at the center of the show. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Anyhow, I was, um, I was training to be a uh, public affairs specialist and it was near graduation and we all received our orders of where we were supposed to go and my best friend at the time was training to become an Air Force F-16 pilot. He was going to be a pilot on one of those planes, Gloria. So he was studying to be um, an F-16 pilot and they had him in um, a base in New Mexico. I forget the name of the base. I think it was Nellis? No, it wasn't Nellis. can't remember the name. I think it's in New Mexico. But there was a, a training base there for F-16 pilots. And I was at Fort Benjamin Harrison finishing up. And I requested to go to that base over there near his training base. So that he and I could be together. You know, my best buddy from um, high school. So he was studying, you know, he, he was an officer uh, studying to fly airplanes, learning how to fly a uh, fighter jet. And I was already getting ready to work as a public affairs specialist, and I wanted to be at the base so I could hang out with him on the weekends. Anyhow, they had me assigned to that base, so I was all happy and everything. Then, a fog came to visit. And I guess the Air Force Orientation Group, the Air Force, you know, the AFOG is in charge of the Thunderbirds. They, they do the publicity and stuff for them. They do all the brochures. They also take all the pictures and all the videos and the press releases specifically for the Thunderbirds, the Air Force Thunderbirds. It's a very elite crew. So they have the flyers on there, and then they have the public affairs people that are part of the team. And I think there's like 12 of them or 16 all together. I don't know. Something like that. But they were telling me it was very elite. And they had this big, huge um, trailer, tractor-trailer truck that had an office with a projection system. It was so fancy and, and awesome. They're based uh, out of um, Ohio. I forget what that... I don't know if it's right Patterson that they're based out of in Ohio, but... They're based out of Ohio. But anyhow, um, they came to recruit me because they were asking the... Um, instructors at the public affairs school for Benjamin Harrison I guess they went to all the instructors and asked for like the top student but they only wanted the best and I didn't know it but apparently my instructors all thought I was the best <laughs> that's hard to believe isn't it but um, they ended up sending my name to the AFOG group and AFOG called me into their little um, trailer booth there, and I went there, and there was like four or five of them sitting there, officers and stuff, and they showed me this really elaborate video, multi-projector that showed the Thunderbirds and the mission of AFOG and how they go around the world and promote everything. They promote the Thunderbirds and stuff. They basically travel with the Air Force Thunderbirds. So they basically travel with the Thunderbirds, and they would cover stuff like this. And um, they showed me this like elaborate 20 minute presentation. Hey, I think they're gonna draw a heart. They're drawing a heart. That means I love you, Gloria. They're doing that just for you, for me. Look at that, a heart. Sending my love to all you YouTubers, <laughs> courtesy of the Thunderbirds. I think those are the Thunderbirds, not the Blue Angels. Blue Angels belong to the Navy. The Thunderbirds belong to the Air Force. We're talking about United States Air Force and United States Navy. Anyhow, um, they finished their presentation. They said, so what do you think? Is this impressive? I said, yeah. And they said, this is a really elite group. And we would like to welcome you aboard. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you guys something, okay? If you're young and watching this, I forget where that sound is. There's a jet zooming by, and there's some more far distance there. But um, whenever an elite group or team tells you, hey, welcome aboard, would you like to join us? The correct response is yes, I'm honored. But Dinoy, no, he didn't say that to them. He said, I'm flattered, but I don't really want to join you. 
I'm tired of moving around and your group moves around the whole world. <laughs> I just want to stay in one place. <laughs> That's because I was a military brat and every two or three years, my dad, who was also Air Force, we moved around the whole world. I was tired of moving. So I told them, I was like, I, you know, I'm really, I'm flattered and stuff, but I want to stay in one base. I don't really want to move around. And, you know, I didn't tell them, but I had, um, I think that was Nellis. I'm not sure where the base is. What is the base in Albuquerque? Not Albuquerque. Maybe it's near Albuquerque. It's in New Mexico, I think. But anyhow, it was the base where my friend was stationed, and I wanted to go there. So, what happened was, they all had this weird look on their face after I told them no. The lieutenant who was in charge of the group, you could see, uh, you could see, I think it was a she. No, it was a he. You could see his jaw drop open. <laughs> he had this look on his face like, Are you kidding me? You're turning down the Thunderbirds? And then they just said, Okay, you can go back to your class. And sent me back to my class. And then next week, we all graduated from tech school. And everyone got their final orders to report to their workstation at their base. And I went to look at the the office area where they have all the orders. I said, how come my orders aren't here yet from that base up in New Mexico? And he said, I'm not sure why it's not there. Why don't you call them and see what happened? So I called the base, the public affairs office in, in New Mexico or wherever I was supposed to be stationed. I said, hey, how come you guys never sent me my orders? Because <laughs> everybody else got their orders, and I don't have any orders. And they said to me, nobody told you about two weeks ago? By the way, that was when the AFOG unit showed up at DINFOS, Defense Information School, to recruit me. They automatically canceled my order. I think the assumption they had made was that I would jump on, you know, that job. Which, looking back in hindsight, I probably should have. That would have been an ultimate job, to travel the world with the the Thunderbirds. Oh, there they go. They were really close here. I missed it. It would have been the ultimate to travel with that group right there. Air Force Thunderbirds. And um, to do a show with them. Not just one show, but every show. You'd be out there. I'd be out there with the cameras and stuff to film it. And, you know, photo equipment to take pictures for promotion and stuff. But I actually turned it down. And I don't know if they canceled it to spite me, but I don't think they did. I think they automatically canceled my assignment, thinking that I would have jumped on it. And then what happened when the, um, when I rejected it, they didn't reinstate my assignment. So I was like, where do I go? Everyone else has left. I'm still stuck here at Fort Bend. And then they said, just hang tight, airmen. And then later on, they came up and came in and they said, guess where you're going? <laughs> it was Grissom Air Force Base, which is in the middle of a cornfield in Indiana, just 70 miles north of Fort Bend. I don't know if they did that to punish me, but they stuck me at Grissom Air Force Base, which is like a KC-135 aerial refueling wing. We were at the 305th Aerial Refueling Wing, and it was only 70 miles away from um, the base, and it was in the middle of nowhere in a cornfield. So I lost my dream assignment. My first choice was that base. I don't know if it was Nellis. Unless it's in California, I'm confused. But the one in, in um, the one in New Mexico for the F-16 training is the one I was supposed to go to. And my second choice was like Japan. I wanted to go to Japan. But they canceled all of that and stuck me in the middle of nowhere at Grissom, and that was terrible. So, moral of the story, if you're ever um, approached by the Air Force Orientation Group or some other elite group, like the Navy SEAL or whatever, don't say no. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you do, don't say no to them. Say yes. <laughs> Or you're likely to end up in the middle of a cornfield somewhere. Uh, look, there they go again. Woo, this is so cool. Let's see if I can zoom in without it blurring on us.
cam is having a very hard time focusing. I'll leave it at far distance so you can actually see the whole thing and it hopefully have less of a problem focusing here. That's what you call loop-de-loop. -loop. It's just uh, way cool, isn't it? Battery's running really low, so I'm probably gonna have to stop filming here because I don't want the camera to cut off and then I think it won't save the film and uh, we'll lose all of this. Well, I'm gonna continue watching the show. I hope you guys enjoyed the, the brief glimpse of the show. Got to see them draw a heart for you guys and got to share a little story about um, my tech training as a public affairs specialist. Sort of. <laughs> There's a lot more stories I can tell you about that. Maybe I'll do that. You know, I do miss the... Um, the Winds of Change channel where I was actually having these talking episodes. So if you guys enjoy these kind of stories, maybe I'll bring them to the Living in a Man channel and then every once in a while I'll just share with you little anecdotes and stories of things that happened like this story with AFOG, which I think is, um, looking back, kind of funny but kind of sad because I think it was a mistake for me to say no. But you know what? Live and learn, right? Until next time, everybody, thank you for tuning in. I hope you're staying safe. Have a great day, everyone. I missed the big one. <laughs> oh, I just missed the big one. They just flew right by the house. There they go again. They're up there. They just flew right by the house. As soon as I cut the camera off, they fly right by the house. Like, look how close they were to the house right here. Maybe they'll do it again. That was very close, huh? I mean, they were so close you could see the numbers on the airplane wings, on the tail. I'm trying to pause it and save the um, video because the battery's going to run out here in a moment. These flyers are like elite. Uh, they're some of the best flyers. The best pilots. I could have been part of that, Gloria. I didn't go. I was a stupid kid. <laughs> Do you agree that that I should win, or you just agree that I'm a stupid kid? Both. Oh, look! Here they go. They go split. It's a split formation. Is that cool or what? Look at that. Is that amazing? Precision flying. Yeah. You know, it's highly dangerous. This job that they do. One of the sad things that happens with on um, this kind of precision flying. See, they're all regrouping here. A lot of times when they fly in formation, uh -huh. they don't, they don't, really look around. They look at the one in front of them. They don't really look at everything. They don't look at the one in front of them. And if the pilot, the one in the lead, if he messes up and crashes, like into the ground, all of them crash. When, when they fly in formation, and like do that, like where they fly together like that, and there's a whole bunch of them. They don't look at instruments and stuff per se. I think they look at the other plane in front of them. I know, they're over there, but I can't really see from over here. They'll come back. There's not much to see, all those things are in the way. 
but um, when they do uh, the, the, the flight information where they have all four or five going together like that, if the guy in the lead, uh, something goes wrong and he crashes like into the ground, all of them will crash because they're all following him. And that happens quite a bit. I think it's happened several times. Sometimes when I see stuff like this, the air shows and see the Thunderbirds performing, I do wonder what would have happened had I joined the Thunderbirds. Probably would have turned out completely different, but then I wouldn't be here with my new wife. You would have been rich. She, my wife says I would have been rich, you know, but I don't think I'd be as happy as I am right now. Hey, mm -hmm. I'm very happy to be here with you. So, we make decisions in life that affect the future from our present. We don't ever quite really know how things are going to turn out. But I will tell you what, even though, you know, I've had some rough experiences in my life, I think for the most part, I've had a very good life. And um, being here with my wife right now, my new wife, I think I do everything the same, even though there was a lot of sadness to get here. Hey, I just noticed, you see the moon? The moon's actually out today. Right there, look at that, the moon. And looking all around here, I normally don't got, show you guys everything here from the sky view, but this is Walter's yard from the sky. While we're waiting for the, the plane to come back, you can see the tree hasn't really progressed too much, although it's a lot more brown now, because I've tried to kill the root system, and we can still see Lizard City still has a few fat lizards running around. They are just sort of, there's a little baby one, and there was a bigger fat one up there. I don't know if you can see them through that little crack. That's a lizard right there. But the lizards are um, still living here. Although soon this will go away when I bring the chainsaw out. So stay tuned for those episodes. Keep missing them when they're close. See, look, they're flying right by. Oh man, it's out of focus. Here comes another one. Can you hear the jets? They're like flying right by. The camera's not picking it up as well as my eye is. Standing here on the ground, you can actually almost see the numbers on them. That's how close they are. They're flying right by Walter's house. This is a really good spot for the air show. We're like in the middle of the, the area they perform in. 